There's still quite a lot to discover in the God of War Ragnarok Valhalla DLC after seeing the credits, including new areas, a special boss fight, new armor sets that carry over to New Game Plus, and way, way more. So I thought to go over, like overall the story is also not over after the credits rolled. Every run you can pick up a treasure that will trigger more conversations about Kratos' past, or you will learn more about how Tyr got into Valhalla in the first place. So if you're interested in that, it's already worth it to do more runs. And also after the ending, of the DLC, a new arena opens up in the Greece area of Valhalla. It's called the Forum, and you go here from the Greece starting area where you find the chest, simply make your way up top, and then you reach it. You only need to have killed seven Valhalla's chosen for it to open. So do that first by clearing the realm tears. There are, by the way, also two doors that will lead you to special wave-based encounters. Maybe you already found those as well. Also nice to do them for extra resources and upgrades, and the timer that will make enemies more difficult won't go down while you're in that arena. Got seven enemies or more, then return to the forum that has now opened up and here you can fight a berserker in the arena. If you beat it, you get the fight at the form trophy and also unlock the berserker armor as a cosmetic option at the shore, but there's more to it. If you namely do another run in Valhalla, defeat the berserker again and then do a third run and also go to the forum, you'll encounter the berserker king. And the level of the berserker enemies will be determined by the difficulty of the grease area, so the long the longer you wait, the harder the Berserker King in this case will be. So make sure that you just kill like 7 enemies and then immediately go to the Berserker boss to make the fight less challenging. If you are successful, you'll get the flawless version of the Berserker armor that looks even cooler. You can of course also get this in New Game Plus after beating the Berserker King for a second time. Like totally my favorite looking armor in the game. And you also get the Hilt of Skofnung as a relic reward so you can pick it at the start of a run, which is kind of crazy. Like this relic is by far the most powerful and you can, if you are lucky, get it from a relic chest as well. There's one after the first boss you take out before going to Greece. And in the Greece chest area, you can also open a relic chest that can contain the item. If you don't see it, you can always re-roll. That's also an upgrade you can get at the shore. So totally do it for some spirit seals. And then, yeah, you can re-roll and hopefully get this amazing relic. You only have one charge though, but you can always buy a recharge at the Tablet of Endeavor. Now, what is even crazier though is getting the Soulless Assault Glyph because then you have a low luck chance for successful hits to cause a soul explosion that deals damage but more importantly restores a relic charge and this stacks as well. So even if you still have one left you can get more charges with the Hilt of Skufnung so you're able to use the relic way more often which is kind of wild. Now there's also this secret red glyph with the question marks you can find. It does not tell you what it's used for but it's actually really cool. So if you find it you want to go to the glyph menu and then destroy it. What you will then notice is that when you use a relic you will after a short time see collector's memory and then switch to a different relic that you can then use immediately as well. So it's basically a relic roulette as you constantly get a random relic after using your current one but without a cooldown so you can keep spamming them and then at one point you will get the hilt of Skofnung again so this is another way to get this amazing relic. So totally keep an eye out for this glyph. It's a ton of fun to use. And it's overall super smart to get this glyph inventory upgrade so you can carry more of these amazing perks, especially if you want to take out the Berserker King. After rolling credits in the DLC, you also get access to other new Valhalla upgrades you can unlock at the shore. Both the Pot and Chest Breaker at the Tablet of Influence are amazing because then every time you enter a sanctuary, the pots will just break in front of you and you don't have to go around collecting every chest either. So this will save you a ton of time each run. And of course, get the Mastery Seal Spot Increase and the Spirit seal spot increase as well if you don't have it already to get more out of these spots. Now also nice to know as pointed out by Jordan Weaver in the comments under my recent video is that if you have a high luck stat you will also see more of these mastery seals and spirit seals in the pots. In Greece you will still have to break them but now you will see if it is worth breaking them because yeah the glow appears way more often which of course shows you that there's a valuable resource inside. And of course if you like the video so far leaving a like would really help me out that would push the video to more people and subscribe for way more God of War Ragnarok videos like this. The challenges will of course also help you get more mastery and spirit seals and well Mr. Skies in the comments also had a perfect tip. You can namely farm your four weapon labors when tier is down. So don't immediately use R3 when it shows up. No, look at your goals and then do the attacks that you need for the particular weapons against a down tier. 
because there you can get all the challenges before the end of the run and then immediately get the rewards after going back to the shore. So this will save you time during the run because you can just focus on playing as good as possible while you can still get all the resources from these labors by just abusing Tear. Sorry Tear. Now you can also get special armor sets in the DLC that you can take with you to the regular game. You probably already used one of these sanctuary barrier keys right that you can buy at the Tablet of Influence or also inside the Greece area. Totally smart to spend some leftover fleeting echoes on this because you will keep the keys after your run. Now I think it's personally smart to go for the chest with the Omega symbol as they give extra mastery and spirit seals. Like no need to go for the other relic chest in my opinion because the Motsugnir skull you can already select from the start is the best before getting the hilt of Skovnung. And the same for the armor sets. You can get way cooler ones so no need to open these chests behind these walls. Like in the chest area of Greece you will in the center find a chest that can give you the flawless Ares armor that also adds the really cool animated effect. It will cost you 15,000 fleeting echoes, which quite a lot, but having the increased echoes upgrade from the Tablet of Influence will help you get it, especially being able to get more from encounters that you will do a lot in the Greece area is of course nice. Now after getting the flawless Ares armor you will find the flawless Zeus armor in the same chest when you enter Valhalla after that. Also 15k so totally grab that as well and you got the two new armor sets. Like now the same chest will by the way have a divine triumph for 15,000 in future runs. I still think it's worth getting if you have the fleeting echoes after like killing a lot of enemies in Greece. What is cool is that at least the flawless Ares armor will then also show up as a cosmetic option in New Game Plus. Just go to the blacksmith and you can purchase it there and then rock it over other gear. Now I did not find the flawless Zeus armor here yet though, but of course let me know if you found it in New Game Plus. I don't see it yet. But that is not all right, Dennis, as you can take way more with you to the base campaign. Yes Jordan, and the biggest one by far is that completing Valhalla unlocks the Legacy Rage, so the one with the Blade of Olympus for your New Game Plus save. Makes sense considering how Valhalla takes place after Ragnarok so giving it to you on a main save would break continuity. But yeah using the blade in Ragnarok is as satisfying as it is in the DLC and even though it cannot be upgraded like your other rages it is still very powerful. It also pairs well with the Greek themed Ares armor as wearing the bracers and waist of this armor increases all damage done for 9 seconds if you trigger your rage with a full meter. If you'd rather regenerate your rage quicker so you can use the blade more often then totally use the Fatebreaker waist and wrist armor as they increase rage generation by 20%. And the Runt of Aggravation also has a chance to give you a rage burst on a parry so you can add that on top too. Alternatively you can equip the full airy set as the chest piece makes health stones also fill up your rage and you get a chance to spawn health stones if you hit an enemy while raging. Finally equipping three Jotunheim enchantments in your amulet of Yggdrasil increases your max rage based on your vitality meaning you can use the sword for even longer. Now you won't unlock the legacy rage immediately you you have to visit a blacksmith and check your lost items chest first but after that you are free to use it throughout the whole campaign. And when you grab your new power from the chest you'll notice that completing Valhalla has also unlocked a new armor. The Glory of Sparta armor is Kratos' armor from the very first God of War game and while the armor has no unique perk it offers a ridiculous amount of strength and vitality. And like other armors in New Game Plus it can be upgraded beyond level 9 to increase these bonuses even further. Now to be honest I was expecting more of a difference in my melee damage with these amount of stats but after testing some basic attacks with and without the armor in the Nivelheim arena I think I'd rather use the looks from this set and still have a useful perk on the actual armor. Because yes luckily you can also immediately transmog other armors over this new Spartan set or rock the look of it while keeping the stats from your current build. But the coolest part is not the armor itself but the fact that you can also change Kratos' look to resemble the days of his Greek past. So that means you have the goatee instead of the full beard, an even paler skin and more prominent tattoos. Swapping looks is super easy, simply press R3 in the armor menu to change between Kratos' classic appearance and his default one. And the best part is, you can pair this classic look with any armor, not just the new Spartan armor. So if you want to go for a more God of War 2 inspired look, you can equip the Ares armor and pair it with this classic appearance. And needless to say, the armor cosmetics and this classic look are also unlocked in Valhalla, which is especially cool when you reach the Greek area of course, toss away the axe so it's no longer on your back, and at that point 
point, you're practically playing a God of War 1 remake with the new combat system. If you have interesting finds from the DLC, let us know in the comments. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and if you want, you can watch our previous one with general tips that will help you get through the DLC by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye.